Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Kelly Sparta, your host, and if you're new to this work, please start at episode one. Intermediate students should start somewhere around episode 98, and advanced students can start with episode 200. And I am here to share with you my wisdom and insights, but I am here with a guest today. And this guest is actually one of my students, and so I'm super excited. Hello. So I have Shaney Coven Easter, which, of course, I really desperately want to say Coven Easter because <laughs> Coven Easter is like the best witchy name ever, but it's not. It's Coven. <laughs> so, it's uh, close, right? Yeah, it's close. It's close. So uh, welcome to the show. Shaney's an acupuncturist. So tell us a little bit about uh, acupuncture. Uh, and you know, you're who you are, just introduce yourself, right? Sure. So tell us that. Sure. Thank you, Kelly. I'm super excited to be here. So as you said, my name is Shaney Coven Easter, and I am a licensed acupuncturist in Weymouth, Massachusetts. Um, I've been practicing since 2007, which always sounds kind of crazy uh, once I say it. Uh, my practice is Bamboo Gardens Acupuncture. Um, and yeah, I just, I gotta say, I love what I do. I'm very, very, very lucky. And I love working with people in this way and really bringing their body, mind and spirit into play, um, in all the treatments. Um, you know, people often come in with physical issues, but we end up addressing so much more than that. Um, so I feel like that is really, you know, I feel really lucky to be able to do that. Awesome. Well, and, and the things that aren't just physical issues is one of the reasons why you ended up joining the spiritual coach certification and doing the welcome to the woo program and all of that so Shaney actually went through the welcome to the woo program because she wanted to learn how to teach it and so uh you've been through the program once and you're going through it a second time now as a as a um a guest coach and so you know can you talk a little bit about what that experience was like for you Yes, I mean, it's just so fabulous. Um, it's, I feel like you always talk about the different levels that the program can work on. Um, so I think you kind of go through it once, you're almost not quite sure what you've gotten yourself into, right? But it gives you a baseline, it gets you to a really nice, more calm, even keeled baseline, which is just so lovely in our super stressed out, crazy society these days. And then when you go through it again, it just gets deeper and deeper. And I feel like it really starts to unlock different things inside. And then it also kind of is very, it, it calms the internal chaos um, more and more. So I think it's, yeah, it's been really awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's been really great to have you in the program because as an acupuncturist, I can talk to you on different levels that I talk to most people on because, you know, I've got that working knowledge of the Chinese medicine system, not nearly at the level that you have it, but, you know, I did my shiatsu certification. I have a freaking clue, yes. right? So, <laughs> yes, you do. It's a clue from 20 years ago, so I do my best. But so let's talk about acupuncture, though, because... Yeah. Acupuncture is one of those uh, things that people know that they are like, yeah, I kind of should do that, but they don't really know why or what you would go to an acupuncturist for or yeah. what acupuncture can, can treat. So why don't you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest questions that I usually get is, what does acupuncture treat? Is acupuncture good for this? Is it good for that? And the answer is almost always yes, because acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine is really its own form of medicine. So we diagnose everybody that comes in from a very different criteria than Western medicine does. Um, so, you know, I, I always try my best to not sound like a snake oil salesman when I'm like, oh, yes, it can treat this and yes, it can treat that. And But it's because it really can because everybody is unique. And, and what's so different from Western medicine that I love is no two people coming in with headaches have the exact same headache. So, you know, from a Western perspective, they kind of get lumped into the same category. Whereas from the acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine, perspective, which I'll say TCM, just to be short, um, is, is it's very unique and they're very different. So we can really get into the intri 
intricacies <laughs> language <laughs> of of what's going on with the unique individual that's you know in front of me and also not just from what's going on with their main complaint but also what's going on in their whole body because as we know everything is connected so from a acupuncture perspective we're not teasing out your headaches versus your stress level versus your gi complaints or your hormonal stuff we're treating the whole person the whole body in every treatment. So what I, I find has been funny lately is that patients have been getting uh, getting in touch with me and, and the first thing they, they start listing their complaints and then they just say, oh, I'm just a hot mess. <laughs> I'm like, you know, it's okay because we're all our own unique hot messes and you've come to the right place because from an acupuncture perspective, we can work with all of it. You don't have to go to 10 different specialists we do it all in one, the same in one treatment. Same doctor six times because they'll only give you five minutes to talk, right? Yeah. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of hot messes and, and stress, I realized that we didn't mention that uh, I said last week that Josh was going to be joining us this week as a co-host, and we had a technology issue, and he was not able to get onto the call today. And so, you know, Shane and I were talking before we came on that, you know, technology has been a freaking nightmare. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're recording this on the 7th of March. Tech, Mercury retrograde is not coming until the 1st of April. <laughs> so we're hosed. We are totally hosed because yes. technology, I mean, Facebook went down two days ago. The, you know, yep. Riverside, which is our platform that we record on wouldn't let Josh in today. Yesterday, Zoom wouldn't let me in over and over again. And, and Shani, you got locked out of Facebook for like two days you know, recently. Totally and, locked out, which was crazy. <laughs> and then, you know, the other day, both my computer and my phone were having these massive storage issues saying there was no storage. I could barely do anything on my phone. I tried and tried to fix it. I gave up. I went to bed. And the next morning, it was fine. It was yeah. totally fine. I have no idea what's going on. There are gremlins in the system. That's what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And there, you know, we're yeah, we're seeing solar flare storms and things like that. But, you know, this is this is beyond the pale. So, <laughs> I, I talked to one of my students who said that she had her Black Friday ads show back up in her her Facebook ads <laughs> account, and she had deleted them months ago. And so, she, uh oh, that, says that Facebook had to restore from back when she <coughs> still had these. <coughs> Yep, it is crazy, <laughs> crazy out there. Wow, okay. I'm gonna just pause for a second. Sure. Okay, clearly I'm not supposed to say when Facebook restored their ads from. Wow, okay. Oh, goodness. My sinuses just released and went down the back of my throat and choked me to death. I'm like, okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe acupuncture could fix that for me, Shaney. <laughs> <laughs> it really could. It really could. Yeah, so those of you on YouTube who are going to get to see that. Those of you on the, uh, the recording will not. So... <laughs> <laughs> human anyway. moment right human moment wow yeah all right here we go we're back um so uh yeah so mercury retrograde is gonna kick our butts is what i'm saying so yeah. you're so in let's big come trouble back to acupuncture because um it, you know the lot of the the stuff you know you say you can treat everything right and I know this because I know that acupuncture, the meridians are all a, a single system that, that interrelates to the entire body. And there are different points on the circuit, on the <clears throat> yeah. meridian system that relate to all of the organs and everything in your body is mapped out on your, on your meridians. It's also mapped out on your ears and your feet. So, yeah. You know, that foot rub you love to get, those, the, the, <laughs> for those of you who are Star Trek fans, the umlock for, for the Ferengis, <laughs> right? <laughs> like it to get the, the ears rubbed, right? Um, all of those things are good for acupuncture, uh, for supporting your meridian systems. Um, 
<clears throat> so give me an example. I mean, yeah, the hot mess, right? We, we know the hot yeah. mess. Right? Yeah. Well, so I, I feel like that that could be a really good segue into how does acupuncture even work, right? I mean, that's yes. another huge, huge question that, that people ask me. So I'm just going to give you the kind of the most simplistic explanation that I give every new patient when they come in. Um, so like you said, there's a series of meridians that run through your body, or even we can call them channels. And you can think of them similar to your circulatory system or your nervous system, and they carry your energy that we call chi. So when everything is open and flowing freely and smoothly, we are in good health. So what happens is that stuff gets stuck and stagnant. So you can think of a kinked garden hose, right? So on one side of that equation, you have all of this energy that's trying to get someplace and it's got no place to go. So that's where we see a lot of our excess conditions, a lot of our stagnation conditions, and that's oftentimes a lot of pain conditions, pain, irritability, anger. Then, though, on the other side of the equation, whatever it is we're trying to water isn't getting the energy that it needs. So this is where we see a lot of our deficiency conditions. So you can think lethargy, lack of energy, depression, things like that. So every individual is their own unique combination of excess on one side and deficiency on the other. So what the acupuncture needles do on the most simplistic level is they very they stimulate your body to very deeply and completely relax so that flow can be restored. So, you know, that that is kind of one of the reasons why we say acupuncture can treat everything. Uh, don't get me wrong. If you need to go to the emergency room, you need to go to the emergency room, right? If you break a bone, you need to go get your bone set. But then afterwards, you can come to acupuncture to help with the healing. If you have an infection that needs antibiotics, you need to go and get your antibiotics. But then you can come into acupuncture to help mitigate the damage that the antibiotics can do to your system and, again, to promote the healing. Yeah. So I remember um, when I was taking my shiatsu certification, I was suddenly surrounded by all these people who had knee surgeries. <clears throat> and I would go in and I would check the energy on their knees. And of course, knees are about being willing to move forward in life. And so big surprise, people who are having challenges where, where they're... they're their energy flow through the space of being willing to move forward in their life would attract a shaman who's all about transforming and, and, <laughs> and, and you know, moving forward in life. So big surprise, right? And so um, I would actually sit and reestablish the energy flow through those meridians with the acupressure, right? The shiatsu yep. and acupressure are the same thing, guys. It's just different words for the same thing. And so, <clears throat> you know, being able to do that, it helped to speed the healing process. And it helped to make it hurt less and heal faster and, and, you know, be less inflamed and all sorts of fun stuff. So, you know, physically, acupuncture makes a lot of sense uh, for uh, the work that you're going to do with people in that regard. Um, it's Absolutely. when you come down to, let's talk about chronic illness for a minute, okay? Sure. Because that's something that I feel like, the, the Western medicine doesn't do so great at. They do management, they don't do curing, right? They don't do healing. Yeah. They just go, oh, it's chronic, we're not gonna fix it. It's like, okay, but for the person living with it, that's not so, such a great answer, right? So right. how does uh, acupuncture differ than that uh, yeah. that Western medicine would say to you, oh, here's some pills, right? Right, exactly. So, you know, one of the, another thing that that's wonderful about acupuncture is that it works on different levels as well. So, you know, for chronic illness, there's a lot going on there, not just the physical illness itself, but the mental and emotional impact, the impact that it has on somebody's lives and with their families, their day to day. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine can be such a great container for kind of addressing all things. And I feel like whenever you start to address something on a more holistic level, the results you get start to be better and deeper. Do you know what I mean? And I think it also just comes down to the fact too that, that like you said before, usually when you go in and see your doctor, you're lucky if you get 15 minutes of face-to-face -face time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So outside of that model, there's way more time for people to just come in and tell their stories too. I mean, so many people have medical trauma. So to be able to come into 
a safe space where you're really heard, you know what I mean? And you're placed in this container where somebody lets you talk about what's going on in your body, how that affects your emotion, how that's affecting your whole life. And then to be able to treat the the root cause of all of that, um, I just feel like it can be amazing for people with chronic conditions. Yeah. So <clears throat> I want to, for, for somebody who has never had an acupuncture session before, uh, I want you to describe for them what is the experience of going in to have acupuncture done. Yeah. So a lot of people are nervous. So if you're nervous, you're not alone. <laughs> um, so usually what happens in the first treatment, uh, it'll be a little bit longer because you have to do a little bit more training as you and your acupuncturists get to know what's uh, a little bit more talking, excuse me, as you and your acupuncturists get to know what's going on um, in your body. So you talk about your symptoms. Um, the acupuncturist will usually ask you questions about how your body is doing in general to get a picture, kind of like a snapshot of what's going on in the moment. So some people do a full medical history. Um, and then you lay down for your treatment. So, you know, we'll definitely talk about the needles part because, you know, does it hurt is, is a huge, huge question, right? So for the most part, no, it doesn't hurt. So usually what happens is you'll lay down. Um, the points that are going to be needled are going to get swabbed with some rubbing alcohol. And then we gently tap in the needles. So you might feel a slight pinch when the needles first go through your skin, but some people don't feel anything at all. And then different areas of the body have different levels of sensitivity. Do you know what I mean? But you really shouldn't feel anything sharp, shooting, or painful. If you do and it lasts for more than 20 seconds, you tell your acupuncturist and they fix it. The last thing we want is for people to lay there and suffer in silence because then your body is tensing back up and that's really the opposite um, of what we're going for in, in the treatment. There are a variety of sensations around the needles that are considered normal. So some people can feel a dull ache, a sensation of warmth, a slight tingling. Some people even feel the sensation of energy moving around um, in their body. Um, but again, it should be nothing that's too uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? That, that makes you feel not relaxed. Again, if you just have an open communication with your acupuncturist. Um, most people usually find it quite relaxing. Lots of people fall asleep. Um, they like to meditate, and, and I have many people who just look forward to coming in like they would look forward to going for a massage. Yeah. So I know that there are a couple of different ways that people do acupuncture. Uh, I, I've been to ones where you're in a private room and you're just getting mm -hmm. the acupuncture yourself, uh, and the acupuncturist will come in, put the needles in, and then leave, and then come back in 20, 30 minutes and, and pull everything out and whatever. Um, and then there's also uh, in there's a, a been to a place where they have a whole bunch of different chairs, and everybody's yeah. being treated in the same room, and so that can be less expensive because you're yep. all getting treated in the same place, and and there's you know lovely little music in the background, and everybody's quiet, and nobody does anything. And so let I just want to mention because this is not something you said, but you don't want to be moving while the needles are in, right? Yes. So yeah, you know, it's really interesting. So you don't need to be nervous and feel like you need to be like stiff as a board. Do you know what I mean? So I tell people little micro movements are okay. You want to avoid gross movements because then you might knock out the needle. And right. then also you too, you keep in mind, <laughs> correct. Yes, yes. You don't want to be on your phone, right? And when you do make little micro movements, you might feel the needles because they are, of course, in there. Do you know what I mean? But yes, usually trying to just be relaxed and still and in the moment is the best way to be. Yeah, it's, I, I find it a great time to just sort of breathe and relax into my body and, you know, become present to my muscles and ask them to relax and just the whole thing. Because, you know, the that's the whole point is to allow the energy to move. And if you're tense, yeah. the energy doesn't move, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep. And you know, it's actually a really interesting phenomenon that I've noticed too, is that um, many of my patients who don't identify themselves as mediums or psychics often get visitation from family members who have passed on when they're in the treatment. And I, I think that's so cool. At first it was like a couple here, a couple there. And then I'm like, oh wow, a lot of the people, a lot of people are having this experience. And I just think that that's 
that's how relaxed that you get, that you can start to pick up on these subtleties that are probably always around us, right? But when you're tense and when you're stuck in all the life stuff, um, you're not able to see or feel what's, what's really around you. So I think that's super amazing. Yeah, I would say it's probably also <clears throat> that their energy is running at a higher level than they're used to. And the more your energy is activated, the more you're going to have access to higher level energetic stuff, which is being able to talk to the yeah. dead, being able to talk to your guides better, being able to see some, you know, if, you're, if your natural inclination is to be able to see the future and be clairvoyant, clairsentience, whatever, um, <clears throat> those things will become more active because your energy is more active in that moment. It's, it's more, it's higher flowing state, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So what is something that people might not expect that might happen mm. in Shiatsu? Yeah, that's a great question. I think my one of my, my second favorite things about acupuncture is that there is, within the scope of Chinese medicine, there is a direct correlation between our emotions and what goes on in our physical body. Um, and I think that this is so important in our Western culture. I can talk especially about the US because that's where I am, where so many of us are taught to stuff our emotions and that showing emotion is not good. Um, so, you know, Chinese medicine just shows this direct route between not having healthy emotions and not experiencing healthy emotions and things going on Physi physically and physiologically um, in your body. So I talk with my patients a lot about emotions and so many people don't even know that they're stuffing their emotions. Um, and, and I think people end up getting more emotional intelligence just because they're given the opportunity to do so or they're encouraged to do so. And then they're more motivated to do so because now they see um, that it's all connected. So I think that that's yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, and <clears throat> if you're wondering one of those people, if you're one of those people who stuffs their emotions and doesn't know they stuff them, uh, here's a good indicator. If you are, when you have an emotion, if you are thinking your way through the emotion and trying to rationally understand it and trying to process it with your head instead of feeling it in your heart, then you're one of the people. And that would be a good thing to, you know, go to your acupuncturist and say, I think I'm stuffing my emotions, right? It's, you could also come to the Welcome to the Woo program because we do a lot of the work in that there. But uh, Yes, but, you know, uh, what a great way, combination, right? Acupuncture right? and Welcome to the Woo. Yeah, which, which you would know better than anyone, right? Yes. So, um, and I know there's one more thing that I, I really want to make sure we cover, which is uh, I know that you diagnose by looking at the tongue, Yes. So, so interesting, right? That's, that. that's always <laughs> that's what, me. I'm like, yes, wow, that's what so cool. everyone and, you know, always yeah. asks. Why are you looking at my tongue? Um, so we look at a lot of things of the tongue. We look at the shape. Uh, we look at the color. We look at the tongue coating. We look at whether it's swollen, puffy, if there are scallops on the edges. Um, and so different parts of the tongue correlate with different energetic systems in the body. Um, and so, yeah, it just gives you, your tongue gives you a snapshot of what's going on energetically in your body. And I will tell you, when I was in acupuncture school, after we learned that, whenever someone was, was in the bathroom, you could see we're all checking out our own tongues. <laughs> And in a lot of my acupuncturist chat groups, whenever there's um, a good picture in the media of a celebrity with their tongue out, we use that as an ability to try to diagnose what's going on with them. So it's fascinating, yeah, it's weirdly fascinating. Well, I, you know, I remember my shiatsu teacher was saying, you know, that they say that it takes 10,000 tongues to really know what you're doing with diagnostics, right? And so, yes. you know, um, I was like, oh, well, that's fascinating. I'm going to show you my tongue. Uh. It looks good, Kelly, from what I can see. Slightly swollen, reddish on the tip, thin white coat. Not bad. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, slightly swollen, would that be an indication that I have inflammation in my body or? 
Um, yeah, or it'd also be an indication of chi deficiency. So you're feeling a little, I don't know, you're feeling a little run down lately or, or tired or... Yeah, I, I was up in the middle of the night last night. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't yep. get a full night's sleep. I was too excited yeah, about something. I was thinking. I was like, ooh, <laughs> ooh. I got an opportunity. I'm like, ah, is it what I want to do? I don't know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My brain got like, ooh, you know. You know how that goes. Your brain gets excited yep. and it just goes running off on its own. And you're like, no, yeah. come back. <laughs> yes, He's like, no, I can't. I can't. I'm having too much fun. Right now. Yeah. But the red, the the red tip too, um, could be an indication of uh, inflammation in your body as well, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I I have actually been having that, so that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, these I, I find this um, this entire process fascinating. I mean, there are so many systems that we look at in when we're so this is the healing series. So I'm going to just sort of tie this together with some of the other stuff we've talked about and some of the stuff that'll come up in the future, but. There's so many systems, and it, it, I don't know if you guys have seen Doctor Strange. I talk about it periodically, but if you haven't seen it, go see it, right? And, you know, there's a scene in the beginning when he first gets to the mystery school where she opens up this book, and she's like, have you seen this system? And it's a chakra system. Have you seen that system? It's the, the Chinese meridian system. And, you know, how about this one? You know, the circulatory system, whatever. And she's like, all of these are maps of people, people who saw one aspect of the whole. And that's so true right? These all are comprehensive systems unto themselves, but they are all also, <clears throat> also facets of the larger uh, holistic healing process, right? And so each one can impact the entire body. So the chakra system can impact the entire body, right? The, the meridian system, the whole body, right? Every, anything that you're doing that has a structure and a system to it impacts usually the entire body. But if you layer them, then you get even more impact, right? So, you know, the psychology plays into the energy, plays into the physicality, plays into the archetypal system that you're operating within. I mean, it's just the whole shebang, right? Even, even, to, um, even to family dynamic structures and generational structures and things like that. Everything is interrelated. Everything plays into everything else. And so when you start looking at doing healing work uh, as a healer, you there are, there are several pieces that you've got to pay attention to. You have to recognize that no one system is the be all end all. Okay. And so, you know, yes, you may work in one system, but you have to recognize that the other systems have validity as well. And mm -hmm. that you're going to pick what works for you. And you may actually mix and match and combine things because, you know, that's what we do. We, we get drawn to what is most relevant for us. And I'm a big fan of take what works for you, leave what doesn't, right? And, yeah. But at the same time, you also need to recognize that everything's interrelated. And so when you're doing shiatsu or acupuncture or reiki or you know uh, massage right when you're doing anything on the body cranial sacral right you know all these different modalities um, they all interrelate with everything else and so understanding how other systems work allows you to really be able to see on a deeper level what's going on because what may not be obvious in one system because you're looking at it from one angle becomes glaringly obvious from another system because you're coming at it from a different angle. And so this is why having multiple modalities as a healer makes sense because they're all different perspectives on the same thing. And when you can shift your perspectives, you can see things that were blocked by other things in a different perspective, right? And if you don't believe me, ask a, a detective who's just taken 10 different crime scene reports because they all give you different stories because they've seen it from different perspectives. And that brings me to the next thing, which is different filters, right? So as the healer, you have your own filters and what you see the world through. And you may pick up on things or you may not. This is the reason why we do our inner work is to get rid of the blocks that we have to our perception, our ego, our 
fears, our judgments, our expectations, you know, all of these things that get in the way of what is the just there in front of us. And oftentimes our interpretation changes what we perceive. And sometimes it changes it to something that's not accurate. And so if you're stuck as a healer and you're working on something and you can't get it to shift, change your perspective. And if you can't change, if you're, if changing your perspective doesn't fix it, then look at your own, ex, your own, uh, internal dynamic and see if you are having expectations, see if you have, uh, you know, if it's triggering something in you and you don't want to look at it, you know, what are the emotions going on inside of you? What are the, the thought patterns going on inside of you that are keeping you from getting to the bottom of what is going on, right? Because yeah. oftentimes that can be the case. This is why we have the archetype of the wounded healer is that when you don't do your inner work as a healer, you are a wounded healer and therefore your wounds will at the very least limit your ability to be effective and at the very worst cause you to do damage because you're triggered and you do something or you're you need to make it all go away immediately because that's how you provide your value and therefore you push something that isn't ready to go and then you do damage and things like that and we talked about that in the first year of the podcast so if you didn't hear that long welcome back to the beginning uh, but, but yeah, so these are all things that, that when you look at the healing um, modalities in the world, these are the things you have to pay attention to is this broader scope, right? And you can even take like a tarot reading and apply it to an a energy healing, right? You could pull cards and put them on different parts of the body and use that to do a read. You know, you can mix and match these these uh, traditions and these uh, practices, you can mix and match them any way you feel like you can. I used to put crystals underneath the table when I was doing Reiki treatments uh, because I wanted to use the crystals. I used to, you know, I attuned my my uh, amethyst tower to Reiki 2 and had it just bathe the room in Reiki 2 while I was doing the rest of my work. You know, there's there's lots of ways that you can mix and match. I used to use a window crystal, which is a, a, it's a crystal that is uh, frosted on the bottom and has a top that's been, it's a quartz crystal that's had the top sliced and polished so that you can kind of see into it, but it's frosty at the bottom. And I used to use that to see different things inside of the body before I could do that without the crystal. Mm. So, you know, mixing and matching, it's all good. I, I've known acupuncturists who have put crystals in their uh, room. I think I saw one in your room, actually, right? Yes, I um, definitely, yep. Yeah, I use some crystals and stones, and I use um, oracle cards for some people sometimes, either before or after. I mean, and, and I think you're, actually, you're absolutely right. I mean, I always think of it as different avenues to get to the same goal. Do you know what I mean? Which is someone feeling whole, complete, yeah. healthy happy however that looks for them you know yeah so um i know there's going to be some people on here who are further further along because we're later in the podcast and they're going to be thinking about maybe getting an acupuncture certification mm -hmm. would you recommend it and if so what advice would you give somebody who's just getting started um yes i would recommend it because i think it is wonderful um in the states it's a three to four year either master's program or entry-level doctorate program so it is it's a lot um, so i would say do your research get treatments talk to other acupuncturists and be sure it's it's something you're really passionate about because it it it's difficult to you know it's not impossible you know what i mean but it's a big it's a big time and financial commitment um but i would say look you know get treatment definitely befriend an acupuncturist and ask them all of your questions and then if you're really into doing it check out the schools that are around you and you know see what they have to offer and and if you gave one piece of advice for getting your practice started once you got your certification mm -hmm. what would that be um they don't always 
teach amazing business classes in acupuncture school. So I would say, I would actually recommend someone from the moment you decide you're going to go to acupuncture school, start reading up about business, number one. And then number two, which usually happens as part of the acupuncture program, but um, definitely start doing your inner work if you're not doing it already, because all of that comes out when you start your private practice for sure. Yeah. <laughs> can come out right in your face if you're not prepared for it. <laughs> so yeah, I think you need the, the knowledge yeah. from your studies. You need to have some business knowledge, which Kelly, I know you have such a wealth of that, which is amazing. And then I think a lot of things that surprises people is a lot of the internal work. And, you know, it's, it's going to come. You're going to have to do it whether you like it or not. So you might as well start, start at the beginning, right? <laughs> yeah. Businesses are second to primary relationships, right? Second to romantic relationships. Yes. Businesses are the best workshop and personal growth you'll ever get in your life. <laughs> it's just yes. The nature of the beast. So that okay. has been my experience for sure. <laughs> right? Yes. It's just this never ending bad, you know, bap, 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 clue by four to the forehead, clue by four to the forehead, bap, bang, bang, right? Yeah. It, 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 it can be quite painful. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think we've all been battered around uh, if we've been in business for any more than a year or two. You've definitely been battered around pretty hard. Um, yeah. Okay, so with that uh, in mind, so how would people find you if they're in the Weymouth area in Massachusetts? Yes, so you can go to my website, which is bamboogardenhealing.com. All of my information is there. And I am pretty active on my Facebook page too. So facebook.com slash bamboo gardens acupuncture. Awesome. So let's see. I need a Kellyism for the wrap up here. Let me think about this. Uh, let's say healing is good. Acupuncture is great. Do it. Try it. Always try something new. That was really long. We'll shorten it to uh, try new healing modalities. Very nice. Oh, fuck me. Are you kidding?
You're back. I can hear you. I can see you. Yes. Yes. Can you? Okay. It says recording on my end. Yeah.